usually you would think that something that is ultra sensitive would be even better than what we have, but uh, not necessarily. There are at least some nervous people who are trying to avoid what my guest calls troponinitis. There is a paper coming in the April 15th issue of Jack, and it's avoiding the imminent plague of troponinitis. We're looking at the need for reference limits for high sensitivity cardiac troponins. Dr. Christopher Kramer is a professor of radiology and cardiology at the University of Virginia Health System, Charlottesville. This is a commentary, uh, an invited commentary on a paper by Gore et al. Can you talk about their paper first and what they were talking about? Yes, the, the paper from uh, Gore and colleagues reviewed uh, data from three of the largest uh, cardiovascular studies, uh, ARIC, uh, CHS, and the Dallas Heart Study. And what they looked at was uh, reference limits uh, that came out of those uh, large patient populations for normal values for troponin T. The, the published reference value for troponin T is around 14 uh, picograms per milliliter. And that, that's based on you know, s standard deviations of, above a normal value. The problem with that is that those normal reference uh, values are developed in young, healthy populations. So if you look at uh, older patients with cardiovascular disease, different uh, ethnic populations, that, that normal range, that, that low normal reference value must be pushed up. So if you use that uh, cutoff of 14 picograms per milliliter, every male over age 65 would be diagnosed with a myocardial infarction. So clearly, clearly we have room for improvement. So what they showed that in certain populations, a normal value is up to 36 picograms per milliliter, depending on the population that you're looking for. This really points out the need for age, gender, and ethnicity level, normal levels for these values, or else we're going to be in a, in a problem with troponinitis. Well, if these, if these assays become approved by the FDA before we get all this taken care of, it's going to be a mess. Yeah, I think it, it points out really the need that, that clinicians are going to have to look back at these larger patient populations to really understand where the cutoff for normal versus abnormal, or else we're going to have a, a, a plague of, uh, of false positive myocardial infarctions, uh, especially in hospitalized patients. So any other advice that you give in this particular piece as to what's needed now? Yeah, I think what's needed now is uh, a prospective study of a large database which has a wide range of age, uh, gender, uh, ethnicity, so that we understand going forward what true normal values, normal reference limits should be, so that uh, we will have a basis for understanding a particular value in a, a particular patient and really know, do they have a myocardial infarction or is it just a false positive? So there's some real trepidation, and there's real reason for the trepidation. Yes, I think so. As uh, you know, for this, the clinical cardiologists doing uh, hospital-based consultation, you know, half of the consults are for uh, an elevated troponin, and if the incidence of elevated troponin goes up because of the, we have highly sensitive uh, values without reference limits, right. I think it, it can be overwhelming. Well, the paper itself is Gore et al., and that's in uh, the. Uh, April 15th issue of Jack and the invited commentary by Dr. Kramer. For Cardio Source World News, I'm executive editor Rick McGuire.